then, and then it boiled over. Overheated, so we've uh, taken that as a win for this time. You know, I got to the other end, that was the main thing. So, plan B go fishing. And there's the military range sign that I showed you in the previous video. It turns out that even with the tides in, so that it looks like you can't get on the beach, if you climb over these railings, there's a little path around here. And then you come down this dune and uh, you pop out of here, which is nice. It's Sunday, I've been interviewing the drivers of these cars, they've been telling me about the cars. Um, there haven't actually been any runs today because it stopped raining, but look at the mist. So that's the course up there, and you can't really see much. So there's a bit of a safety issue going on as to how much visibility is safe. They've lined the course with cones, traffic cones, so in theory you just follow the cones and hopefully you'll see the end as you get to it, but um, yeah, so everyone's patiently waiting. Here we go, we're checking out the damage. It's the next morning, it's raining. What are we gonna find under here, apart from green slime? Well, the top's off, so what do we got? More green. Uh, not quite as terrible in there as I thought. There's definitely a bit of green there. All on the radiator counter. Green there. I noticed the rev counter stopped working. It was like going all over the place, which is presumably why it was being sprayed with liquid. Oh, more green here. In fact, a lot of it might have spewed onto the deck here and then run down, which might have protected the engine a bit, but we'll soon find out. It's not too bad at all. No, empty. Pretty much empty. Might be full. Of the race organizers. You see the catch can's full. So that's that's probably overflowed. And then it's drained out through the bottom of the car basically. This tank is from the wingtip of a Canberra, which is a twin engine early British jet right. fighter. So, this car apparently has a radiator. Oh, there it is. So, the air goes in the scoop and comes out under the tail somewhere. Check out his gear linkage. Now that's the other way of doing it. You see that lever? Oh, I see. Right, the, the back end of the lever there runs 
in a slot. Um, you see behind it. So when he pulls the lever back, uh, it, it's actually got a lever effect. So the forward and back movement is really easy. And then when he turns it, it just moves round in the slot. I might. That's a good idea, actually. That's a really good idea. <laughs> Lots of military bits. <laughs> and I'm probably going to have to change to a steering wheel because uh, the aeroplane style looks cool, but um, handing it one hand over to the other is difficult. It's actually better to have a small wheel. I like the hinge arrangement here, it's really nice. The panel gaps on this car are really nice, they're much better than mine. Now, is that a shock? So he's got a, like, a lateral mounted shock as well. This is weird. He's got like a sideways mounted damper while it's at a slight angle. Oh, so he's got lateral damping because he's not just relying on the spring and he's got a proper damping as well. I'm going to get a lesson now in cooling. You told me yesterday you were still overheating. Not anymore. Oh, what was the secret there then? <laughs> well, not, is that a secret? Oh, yeah. <laughs> An extra water pump. Extra water Oh, right, okay. I've got another pot, a big pump here. It's an electric pump. Oh, right. Because as well as the standard ones or instead of? Yeah. No, right, right. Because you... Both circuits are independent. Yes. So back here, under the summit. That's a lot. Yeah. So your water pump's down there. Yeah. It's going round there. And I've got a pipe all the way. You can see it down there. All the way there. Back up. And there's the back of the radio to there. Right. And then under the sump there. Yeah. For the water pumps, I've got a huge pump. Yeah. There's two inlets in, two inlets out. Right. right. And it pulls water. Right. From the radiator and then pushes up to the other pump, which is only that distance. Right. What the other pumps are doing are pushing that way, but they're not pulling it. Right. So when right. you're at tick over, yeah. the pumps are just going that speed. Yeah. You're not getting circulation. Right. You overheat when you're going slow, not when you're going fast. Yeah, well, that's what I was noticing. That's right. I was hot before you started. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. If you can keep the flow going when you're at low ticket, right. you're circulating and keeping it cool. We're in a different... Right. We're in an encased box. Right, so we want... We want flow. Assisted flow during ticket, right? During ticket. <laughs> and then... Mine's on the fans. So I've got a switch. Yeah. So I switch my fans on and that pump comes on. Right. And all on the same thing. Right. I'm also running an alternator. Yeah, I've got an alternator. So, otherwise yeah. it's draining in seconds. Right. So, that's also a huge, thick aluminium race radio. Oh, bloody hell, I'll fix that. That is the sickest radio I've ever seen. Right. So, the volume, I've got 24 litres of water in total in my water system. Right, and it's most of that where... But, well, that's in the radiator, in the block, and, a lot of the, and in the, the pipes. pipes. Have you got fins on your pipes? No, uh, they're aluminium. <laughs> if you look down there, there's one. Because you use your pipes, it's there's cooling. There, yeah, yeah, yeah. So aluminium pipes right. go into well, the car builder solutions, make a hose. It's flexy, yeah. different yeah. diameter ends. So right. you can put your water pump diameter. Yes. Yeah. And a nice sweepy cut. But I've got this pump arrangement. Right. So it goes from those in, back out, and then into the pump. It's a really complicated mess on there. Right. Get your pipe. Um, but it's adding pipe length. So does the one from the pump does it just go into a Y and then up, or do you have no, like a the pump has got do you have like a chamber? Oh, the pump has got. Techie pump. Oh right, what was the pump? No idea. Oh right. I bought it on eBay. Right. Uh, it's expensive. It was out of a race car. Right. I have no idea what make it is, but it works. Right. So I've solved all my pump problems and heating problems by doing this. Right. So you're, you overheated a bit yesterday because uh, that was a fault with the pump? No, it was because the alternator wasn't working. Right. Okay. So I wasn't. You're draining your battery. So I'm draining the battery and eventually you couldn't do it. Right. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I love your gear linkage as well. Oh, 
So this is a real bomber seat, not a fake one. Don't know where he got that from. Uh, and he's got a real steering yoke. So he he built this tank, I know. Yeah, this is a handmade tank. He, he built the tank first, then he cut it up and made it into a car. He spent a year just making the tank. I, well, I, I overheated and threw green coolant all over the engine and everything, but the engine looks fine. The steam wafting past my head, so I switched yeah. everything off, and they towed me the last bit. But for me, I was happy with that. You know, I got a run. Yeah. <laughs> so how does your cooling anyway, work? Hmm? You've got a big water tank hiding yeah, somewhere. That's the water tank there. That's the water tank. Right. Ten gallons. So how many? Ten gallons. So from st starting up at room temperature, how long would it take? before that's too hot to run it'll do two runs two hot laps really yeah yeah so that's a run to come back slowly yeah. and run straight again yeah yeah it before yesterday you... i did two because they missed the, the timing right. on the first run and it come back and it was fine it, it so just what started, started to get warm then. So when you say warm how what, well the how hot does it get the water pump the, it sort of works by convection anyway, right? Um, but there's a water pump as well, and when it gets to a certain temperature, the water pump comes on as well. There's a sensor, so that comes on. So that's like electric water pump. Yeah, yeah. And because talking to this guy down here, he's got a humongous water, electric water pump. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and a race radiator at the back. Right, yeah. Yeah, and that, that circulates through right. the heat exchanger, which is onto the engine. Right. So that's separate from the engine coolant. In a way, it's better than all the problems you get with radios. Yeah. It is. So why would you? Why would? You, why do you need a heat exchanger? Why not just fill it all with coolant? Just cheaper? Um, because then I can run coolant in. Not that I, I usually don't run water with a bit of um, uh, what you call water wetter in there. Yeah. Um, but you can then change the water in the secondary system, and it's just fresh water. So the heat exchanger is that? Is that from some? Is that just commercial product or? It's an aluminium radiator about this so big. Yeah. Um, welded into a, box. a aluminium box. So you did that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Right. The fabrication. Because I'd be worried. It's like, is my radiator big enough? What surface area would I need in that? Yeah. I did a bit of mass. You did any mass, or just hope for the best? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, no, I did. Or could use an like intercooler from a like I don't know some, some Subaru type things, or yeah, use well, an air intercooler sort of and use intercooler it for liquid. And, uh, and just thought, just go with the radiator, aluminium radiator. Right. Sort of most. Just case it in a box. Yeah. So is that a bike battery? Um, yeah, sort of red top little little um, Odyssey battery. So is that six or twelve? Twelve. Twelve. Yeah. Yeah. It's what's been giving me problems. Is it? Yeah, they don't, but no charging system. Right. Um, which I'm going to put on for next year because it's a constant pain in the neck. Right. So is that running like the electric pump as well? Yes, yeah. Right. So that goes flat pretty fast then? That runs the fuel pump and the water pump, but the water right. pump doesn't usually kick in unless I'm doing more than a run. Right. So what temperature is that set to come on at? Right. It's just below, um, usual fan. It's like a it's a low low temperature fan sensor that your fan would usually come on. Right. Right. Check out the panel gaps here. Or lack of them. Uh, I think these are Spitfire exhausts. Someone told me they were. I think this guy wants to get the fastest four cylinder engine time. don't know what this tank is or whether it's made from the ends of two tanks because it looks symmetrical 
They won't let you use a pointy tank, you see, it's got to be uh, have a snub nose, which is a problem because the later tanks from things like tornadoes have um, they're a lot cheaper, but they have a pointy nose because they're supersonic. That's just no use for this kind of uh, thing. I know this because I asked, and they said no. It's uh, five minutes past five in the afternoon, and the mist has cleared. And so have all the cars. Back next year. This little church or, or chapel actually um, celebrates this guy who was the first person to publish a Bible in the Welsh language. Sold for one shilling. And this is these are the guys that keep giving you the million pound notes. Uh, which unfortunately aren't legal currency, but never mind. Right, before I take this back, there's no way this trailer with a car on it is going to get back up my driveway, so I've managed to uh, find a guy with the last available storage unit. So it's gone into a storage unit, um, which is a bit rough, so the guy doesn't mind me uh, working on it, which is good. So before we take it back, um, I'm just going to move this dash panel over the instruments and we're going to open this box here and I'll show you why in a minute got a little computer in here, a little hobby computer it's got a real time clock and it's got this here this is a memory card so with these surgical instruments, we remove it, hopefully, like that, there we go, there it is, data. <laughs> right, these little memory cards from cameras, you can put them in a bigger adapter like that, and then stick them in your computer and read them. So if anyone is still watching this, let's take this temperature data and see what we can learn from it. Right, so this is milliseconds elapsed. The H is, t is temperature. It takes a minute to boot up. So uh, this is RPM. Um, I've also got vibration and various other things. And some that didn't work but anyway we've got temperature data and we've got tons of it so I'm going to summarize that for you now so it all becomes clear now doesn't it driving it from the trailer to parking it inside the pit area took me up to 56 degrees that's Celsius um, and then it sat there for a while but it didn't really cool down much um, so then my number's coming up, so I drive from the pits and I wait to join the queue uh, for the start line. So there's maybe four or five cars in front of me and you have to get into the queue in your number order. So you sit and wait to turn in and then you turn into the queue and then I cut the engine to stop it getting hot. Um, so that was four minutes, 20 seconds. By then I was up to 91. So you can see here, by the time I actually started my run, um, I was well over 90 degrees, I was probably closer to 100 for the whole run. 
So it's no wonder I boiled over just after I finished the run, slowed down, the water pump slowed down, airflow through the radiator slowed down, and then it just hit 103 and then, and then the steam appeared and I cut the engine. There we are, bye bye car. See you in a couple of days. <laughs>